This is the latest newcomer from Polestar, the EV startup brand that has big aspirations in terms of sales and trying to muscle in on that electric car market. And this is a pretty important car. It's called the Polestar 4. It's a mid-sized SUV, so it's playing in that sweet spot of the market, the sub $90,000 start price where all the action is. Now, Polestar says they want this car to compete with the Porsche Macan EV, the all-electric Macan arriving late in 2024. But really, you'd have to say that its biggest competition is probably the Tesla Model Y. That's the car that's selling in huge numbers. So what's it like? Let's hit the road and find out. So I said this was a mid-sized SUV, but you probably notice from looking at it, it's not your traditional SUV shape. It's more of a coupe-shaped SUV. And Polestar's done some pretty interesting stuff with the packaging in terms of interior in particular. So they've stretched the wheels out. They've made uh, the front and rear wheels a fair way apart but also um, sort of squash the roof down in a way, giving it this big panoramic sunroof and a whole heap of rear legroom. So in the back seats, it's actually loaded with space. Um, loads of room back there. Up front, similarly, pretty open, pretty spacious and a very Scandinavian flavour. Polestars, our Polestars come from China, but uh, you wouldn't know it. The quality on them is top notch. The materials, the finishes, Everything about this car is uh, a real step up. And when we start talking about Tesla, I guess Tesla's got that minimalist interior. This one's very, very different. This one is very upmarket, very luxury. If you're coming out of a traditional luxury brand, you're not gonna be shocked by this. Now, in terms of pricing, the Polestar 4 is available in two models. So you've got a, uh, a single motor rear wheel drive or a dual motor all wheel drive. Single motor one starts at $81,500 plus on road costs. So you're looking around about 90 grand drive away. Now, the significance of that is it comes in under the luxury car tax threshold, which means it can take advantage of the fringe benefits tax exemption. So potentially some pretty big tax savings there. Not short on equipment either. You've got a load of gear, things like obviously electric seats, that big panoramic sunroof, huge center screen. We've also got a uh, separate digital instrument cluster and a lot of Tesla thinking in the tech. So for example, you want to open the glove box, go into the screen, press a button, it opens the glove box. You want to adjust the steering wheel height, um, reach in and out. Again, you're going through the screen, similarly with the mirrors. So a bit of Tesla thinking there with that, which isn't a bad thing, it all works well. Um, that whole screen is controlled by Android Automotive, so it's got that software in the back end. So Google Maps built in, for example, but also a whole bunch of downloadable third-party apps that you can pop on the screen. So a heap going on there. So this one I'm in is the dual motor. That's more like $93,000 plus on road. So call it a bit over 100 to, to drive it away and it's got a lot more grunt 400 kilowatts so 0 to 100 3.8 seconds so you're not lacking in grunt floor the throttle and it leaps it's pretty quick and it's got that usual EV smoothness that usual EV throttle response that means everything is here now ready to go Polestars have always been a little bit sporty and this one's no different this one is all about uh, you know, I guess a bit more athleticism in the corners. It doesn't have a Porsche flavor necessarily at all in terms of uh, it's a bit more digital, it's a bit more point and shoot, but um, it's effective, it's efficient, it's uh, quick when you get into it. The suspension, it's a little bit firm, but um, it's, uh, it's still cosseting enough, it looks after you, and you can adjust it with adjustable dampers on this version we're in. So, it's, um, so you've got a bit of flexibility there in terms of uh, adjusting it, setting it up for the way you want it to drive. So you've got no problems with pace. It's certainly pretty quick, pretty slick. Punches between corners really nicely. Also got heaps of grip. So this car we're in on 22 inch wheels. So it's got the performance suspension, some of the option packs on it, but uh, it's very accomplished through the corners. Not a whole lot of tactility though in things like the steering. Could do with a little bit more work there, but, uh, but certainly effective. Perhaps the biggest challenge Polestar is going to have is convincing people to stick this on their shortlist. There's a lot of action, a lot of activity in the EV market at the moment. At least this stands out from a, uh, a design perspective. It's something very different, something uh, pretty unique in the market. So uh, I guess it's got a, a USP from that perspective. But um, people who get in it and try it, they're going to notice that uh, it's also got a fair bit of substance. One thing this Polestar does brilliantly is attention to detail finishes materials. So everything from this sort of woven knit here to uh, you can either get some pretty plush leather or um, or some fake leather which looks very real and even these finishes around the pillars on the dashboard everything is really top notch it's also got some pretty cool ambient lighting going on so uh, all through the doors for example you can get this nice glow and, and some sort of speckled almost star like patterns going on so you can even adjust that ambient lighting 
depending on which planet you'd like to align with. Let's go with Mercury, see what that looks like. <laughs> and swipe between them. Venus, Earth, Mars. Earth's a bit boring, isn't it? Go for something else. So the Polestar 4, it's not perfect, but nothing is. So that's sort of semi-refreshing. Uh, but it is very, very good. It's got a whole lot going for it. Things like um, a heap of back seat space, really interesting and different design, both inside and out. Great attention to detail and a whole bunch of tech. And that's sort of tech that in some ways sort of rivals Tesla. Does it really hassle the Porsche Macan? Is it likely to play in that territory? I'm not totally convinced about that, but it does give something different, bring something new to the EV table. So for that, it's a big tick.